with me is Ted Lord. He's head of European Covered Bonds at Barclays Capital. And Ted, thank you so much for joining us. Is this something pretty unusual, these movements that we're seeing, or is it just, well, a, a matter of fact because the risk is increasing everywhere else? Yeah, well, I think that uh, a couple of things to, uh, to keep in mind. You know, we're have, on our way to have a record amount of issuance of covered bonds. And I think what is happening is investors really like the fact that a covered bond is not only a debt obligation of the bank, but is secured by the bank's best assets. Can we talk about a deluge and, and what effect is that going to have in the longer term? Well, I think so far so good. We're uh, over about 30 billion euros of new issuance in January. And what we're seeing is more investors are actually coming into the market. Now, not too long ago, we had the covered bond purchase program of the European Central Bank, which was used to really kickstart uh, a lot of the economies across Europe. That caught the eye of a lot of investors, not only uh, out inside Europe that were not investing in the covered bond market, but also outside. So we've seen a rise in the amount of investors that are buying these instruments because they've been around since 1769, and we've never had a payment problem ever. In fact, we've had some cases where we've had governments default on government bonds, but people who had covered bonds were paid in full and on time. So, Ted, a lot of this issuance comes from Europe or elsewhere in the world? Well, primarily Europe right now. I mean, the European markets uh, are the oldest. Uh, some of the largest uh, issuers of covered bonds are coming from countries whose finances are still in pretty good shape, you know, from Germany, from France, also from the Nordic region. But it's been really primarily uh, European focused, although we're now starting to see issuers of covered bonds emerge from from Australasia. We've seen you know, a fairly active issuance of Canadian issuers last year. And in terms of the currency it's in, a lot of it is it in U.S. dollars or does it just well, really depend on, on who issues it? It's mainly euros. That's because the European market has really been the, the mature, locomotive. Yeah. Uh, however, we're seeing more U.S. investors diversifying into covered bonds. So there's been a large rise in covered bonds that are issued in U.S. dollars. And we are now starting to see appetite uh, for issuance in other currencies from investors such as yen and sterling. In Swiss francs, we've had a market that's been going on for a while, so that's been also very much uh, a focus over the past year. Ted, you're expecting records in terms of the benchmark size cover bonds for this mm -hmm. year. Is this trend going to continue? A lot of you know, economists and analysts come on saying, actually, the way we're going to deal with bonds over the next five years is going to dramatically change. Yeah. Well, I think for banks that are looking for longer term funding, it seems to be much more cost efficient for them to issue covered bonds. Uh, for the investors, if they're going to issue, if they're going to invest their money mm -hmm. for a longer period of time, they like to have the fact that the uh, investment is secured by the bank's best assets. So as we move from a sort of a government supported uh, funding market into more of the private uh, market, the covered bonds is the natural first step for many issuers. Ted, thank you so much. Ted Lord there. Well,